Good evening. It is 5.30 on Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, and this regular meeting of the Sandpoint Planning and Zoning Commission is now called to order in Council Chambers at City Hall, 1123 West Lake Street, Sandpoint, Idaho. For the record, I am Chairman John Hastings presiding. Also present are Commissioners Amelia Boyd, Ben McGran, Wayne Brett Brenner, and absent are Grant Simmons and Slate Camp. We will now recite the Pledge of Allegiance. If Everyone would please stand. John, John what? it's Benner, not Brenner. Oh, what did I? Oh, Benner. Did I say <laughs> Brenner? Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And okay, Mr. Called a lot worse. okay, there we go. We got that correction. I guess I said Brenner and it's Benner. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, for clarification, Moose Dunkel also appears to be absent. I thought I mentioned that, did I not? But yes, he is absent if if I accident. Yes, you're right. I did miss that. Thank you very much. Moose Dunkel is also, although it's not currently in attendance. All right, a quick announcement. There are listening devices available if anybody here in the council chambers would need them. And if not, we'll proceed. Are there any other general announcements from commissioners? How about from city staff? We have confirmed the joint meeting with city council and that we can hold that on May 31st. So That's as right. of um, this evening, my I only knew most would not be able to attend that, but I understand Amelia. Are you, you're not able I to won't be it? in town. Okay. No, but if anybody else can't just, I'll send out a reminder email to everyone tomorrow. Thank you. And one other, I just wanted to introduce the commission in case you have not been introduced. Brandon Stagler is in the back of the room and he is the city's new civil engineer. So he will be coming to, probably not all of your meetings, but um, in particular, if you have engineering questions, he will be able to answer the whole questions for you. Great relationship Welcome. with Dan, I would imagine. I believe we've met before. Yes, <laughs> he just needs to sit up here now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of the meeting minutes, and I will now entertain a motion to approve those minutes from the May 2nd of 2023 meeting. I motion to approve. Thank you. A second, okay. also excellent. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, old business. Next on the agenda this evening is a discussion of comments received on the draft comprehensive plan and direction to staff of possible document changes. And I will now yield the floor to city planner Amy Tweeten for an introduction of this agenda item. Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, wanted to go through again the process where we have what we have completed, where we are. Um, again, the Planning and Zoning Commission workshop work session on the plan. Um, we completed March 28th uh, and then sent the draft plan out for public comment on Conveo. Um, and those com that comment period just ended on May 7th. And then we held the public open house on April 27th. And uh, so tonight we're going through those comments again in case there are, now that it's closed, I don't think we received too many um, from our last meeting when we discussed them to close, but just to make sure we go through that. Um, and then we have a joint meeting with city council, a work session to go through the plan, um, you know, let them know what the process we've come up with, if there's any major concerns that they have with it. Um, and then pending the outcome of that is when the commission would schedule a public hearing on the actual plan. Mr. Chair. Yes. Just a question. Is there a time frame from the time we have our joint meeting to the time that the uh, city council would have to have their uh, uh, hearings? No, you will have to because pending what comes out of that, if there's additional changes or things that need to happen, um, once you are ready to schedule a public hearing, we have to publish for at least 15 days. 
Um, City Council does not have to have a hearing as well. Um, usually we will do a, a hearing at council as well. So that would be another 15 day period. So it'll likely be a couple months yet until we okay. get. Thank you. Uh, so as of the close of the common period, um, the conveyor site, there were 597 views of the document and 172 comments. Uh, 15 of those were ones that were put on conveyo based on things uh, brought up at the open house. And then there were some that either Miriam or myself, uh, like the pictures are fuzzy or different editorial um, issues that need to be addressed. Um, many of the comments were um, wording suggestions and those are easy enough to incorporate. Um, some of the comments um, were either not necessarily comprehensive plan related, but related directly to items that are in the implementation table. So there was discussion of we need codes on um, dealing with building height and bulk downtown. So those are all things that will be discussed in the code update, and those are all covered in the implementation appendix A. Um, but there were a few things that uh, Miriam wanted to get your input on of um, are there changes needed or how do you want to incorporate the comments? Um, and the three items are the future land use map. And there um, were several comments about our proposed future land use at the Southeast corner of division on Ontario. Uh, the view shed map that's in the plan and the analysis and whether there are changes needed to that. And then um, do we need additional goals related to water conservation? So not a lot of kind of broad things. Um, first one is uh, the comments on the future land use map at the southeast corner of Division in Ontario. Um, we are showing it as that land use category of medium density. Um, and again, we did that even though that area is currently zoned RS single family um, to address the fact that we get, we had throughout public engagement, there were so many comments on need for housing that that was an area seen as we could potentially, again, it's not proposed as high density residential. Um, so a little kind of overview. Um, on the left is the area that we were that we identified, and that again is the southeast corner of Division on Ontario. Um, the city county building is to the northwest, so there is a large parcel um, available now. It um, it has been proposed as a single family subdivision that may ultimately be what it is, um, but just given that it is an area that looks like you could maybe have a little more density. Um, currently in the plan, it's showing as context area two, which is the lowest density residential district. Um, and then on the right is that we are showing as medium density, which um, that could be single family. Again, we don't have the regulations for this yet, but it could be single family, it could be duplex up to potentially small multifamily buildings. Um, but right now the, the regulations in place are single family. It's just whether the commission feels we should show this as a potential for future higher density than single family. Or um, I think the main concern um, of a lot of the commenters is this is a wet area and there, um, this is where the peepers are very loud. Yes. <laughs> um, we do know to the north of this is the lights out site. I did connect with the developer of that and I don't know how quickly, but he does still have plans to do, I think it's 102 units there. I don't know how quickly that will happen. The first step that he needs to do is go through, um, a subdivision of the property, but he has his site plan approved. Um, so that is question one of 
Um, is this an area of the future land use map that needs adjusting? And on the uh, proposed diagram there is the only area that is really under consideration and, or, and that the comments were addressing that area in orange? Correct. Okay. Correct. Mr. Chair? Yes. I mean, my thoughts are is that um, we are, uh, affordability is, is a, something that we hear a lot about. And I think that um, higher density residential offers more affordability. And so I think that this is one of those areas where we can say that we're trying to address the affordability issue by creating opportunities for density. If a developer wants to develop it into a residential, they still have that option based off of the, this proposed zoning. Um, but if there was somebody who wanted to do something more dense, um, that would be allowed by this. So I think from an affordability standpoint, that this is one of those tools that we have to address that. And I would recommend that it maintains the way that we're proposing it. Thank you. And for uh, context, the area that is currently under development of some sort, it's either part of the orange or just um, to the east of there, the uh, yellow. It's to the north. So it's up here. No. no. Oh. Well, looking at existing, that wooded area that used to be a farm site. At this, right? No. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah, in that area. Yeah, that area there that's currently being developed, or at least is being cleared. Uh, right. It, this is the one where um, we received a preliminary plat. Um, we had a, several comments back of things that needed to be changed, and they were having a very hard time designing the stormwater system. Um, so my understanding from the property owner is they may be revising and coming back with something different. And is that currently being single family or? Yes, okay. yes it is. Gotcha. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Yes, I, Brent, better. Just so that also includes those homes down there on uh, to the south. Right. Okay. Not necessarily that it would change, um, but we just uh, just drew the line down to the vineyard court. And was the comment um, just from somebody currently living living in that area? Right. I think there was a couple um, residents of that area that wanted it to stay as lower density residential. Mm -hmm. I think that might have been coming from people on the, the vineyard road there. Okay. Yeah. I know one of them, and they're concerned a little bit about it. So, mm -hmm. why they were included. We could conceivably move the line up just to go to the north side of the existing homes. I mean, my personal thoughts are just because it's multiple ownerships in there. And if they are single family now, and the new development going into the east is also singly, single family, it would make more sense to keep it single family. Just for the purposes that if someone comes in and buys one lot and not the whole thing, um, that it would be out of context with the character with the character of that neighborhood. And it certainly looks like there is plenty of high density developing coming directly across the street. That's my thought. Commissioners, any other thoughts? I think I'm with Ben on on. I agree with both sides, but I, I think I'm more leaning toward the medium density just for that option to create, um, especially what's going on across the street, potentially, um, then it would tie into the character of the neighborhood. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I mean, yes, Mr. Benner. I can, I can concur going to more of the medium density, but I'm just thinking of pulling those homes out that are already built and in that other dead end little uh, area there that my understanding uh, that whole orange area is currently built is it not uh, that entire area that's no, orange no. Mm -mm. what part of it is not built the north east corner 
and that's not part of the current developing that's going on. There's... No, I think that is. I think that's the piece that they're working on right yeah, now. Yeah, the large, the large parcel is uh, what their what a subdivision was proposed. Show me in the the aerial photo about where the boundaries of that orange and the proposed are. Um, so it, it's coming down to Vineyard Court and then going up <coughs> is what this is showing. Oh, so the scales are very different. They are okay. I. I was not perceiving that. Yep. I was not perceiving that. You can kind of see it behind the orange. Um, you can see these are the. No, I. The little cul de sac that's showing up on the proposed um, is off the map on the existing. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Right. You mean this one in yellow? Whoops. The cul-de-sac in yellow. The cul-de-sac that's in yellow there. Right. Yes, is that not, is not. Not on the, on, on the existing map. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, the consideration for that is something that we would want to address before. I, I mean, at what point do we want to make? I, I would ask for the commission to give direction tonight and then before uh, we have the joint workshop with council, we would make the change to the map um, and let them know that based on uh, comments at the workshop that that was adjusted. Gotcha. Or not. Okay. Because right now in, sorry, Mr. Chair. Oh, no, yes, please. Because right now in the um, proposed comp plan, this is how it's, this is what we're Correct. setting forward if we just- That it would change. Status quo. No, the proposal is that it's changing to medium density, right. yeah. Right, so our task is to either keep it as it is. Correct. Or revert, revert back. Revert to existing. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to proposed. Or shrink the area shrink to not include vineyard port. And keep the remainder of the um, corner as medium density. I like that idea. Shrink, excuse me, of shrinking it a little bit so that vineyard court's not included. Okay. Yeah. So you need a motion for that? Uh, not a motion. Oh, just that this consent the direction. Yeah, it's 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 not a yeah, not, not a motion. It's nothing that we're oh so, but well, Mr. Chair, I would be in favor of uh, keeping it as proposed, except shrinking it down and not including uh, vineyard court. And is defining it as vineyard court precise enough? Yeah, I know where to draw the line then. Okay. It's, it's pretty clear where that property line is, so it would just follow that. Yeah. I'm in agreement with that. That would be an unacceptable compromise in my viewpoint. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're, you're not in favor of it, Mr. Chair? But, no, I said that would be an acceptable oh, compromise. Okay. I yes. Acceptable. I would r r rather it stay as existing. Oh, okay. But. But to shrink the size of the change is something that I'm amenable to. Okay. Sorry, I apologize. I, no, no, no. Well, this that's, is, that's good. This hurts you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Certainly. Um, the next one, there were comments about the view shed map. Um, and I have to say this map has never made a lot of sense to me. Um, and if you read the, the narrative, um, it says map 12 illustrates visible areas from six viewpoints. And those viewpoints are those dots on the map. Um, areas that are only visible from one of the six viewpoint locations is light blue. And areas that are visible from all six locations are shown in red. 
The visible frequency in the legend indicates the number of locations that can see the area. In a, so there were comments that it was a good map, but it was being interpreted incorrectly. There were other comments that we needed different viewpoints hmm. um, or starting points for what the view is. And I think the concern there was uh, potentially specific to downtown building height. Um, I mean, clearly, and that the narrative talks about the importance of the view of Baldy Mountain. Um, so that's, I think, the reddish orange color um, that, that's very visible throughout town. Uh, but why those specific locations? There, all the locations are at parks except for Baldy. Baldy Mountain. <laughs> well, no, I, okay, Baldy Mountain isn't in orange, it's in blue. And then there's a dot on that, yeah. So back to, I understand, um, I mean, we know, we know views are important. It's just, is this map communicating something important or should it be represented differently? Any input? Uh, my only comment, comment would be that I think that, that, you know, preserving a view shed is important. Mm -hmm. I do not know the uh, implementation of this map and enforcement of it, what that would look like, I would imagine that would be a very um, difficult, nuanced thing to do. Um, and if you were to pick new points as the baseline for these views, what would those points be and why? Um, it makes some sense if they're from parks because people recreate in those parks a lot, but. And clearly, you can't have a view shed that's from everybody's back porch, which would be probably what a lot of people would like, but it's not feasible. <laughs> um, to your point, if if the point is these are the view corridors, well, they're calling them view sheds. A view shed is much wider than a view corridor. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying this is so you need to regulate building heights to protect this view shed? And that would be your implementation tool. Gotcha. Mr. Chair? Yes. Would, would those Benner. building heights only be around those points then? I mean, where do you draw the line when you start looking at building heights for protecting that view shed? Right. That could get to be quite cumbersome. I mean, I, I would say when we're updating the code, we're going to want to look at building heights overall, <laughs> but how that impacts, to your point, the view shed, because again, it's a broad, a very broad area mm -hmm. um, and a long distance too. So I don't have an answer to your question. Any other? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I mean, I think it's a it's an information tool. I, I don't necessarily know if it's going to make any decisions for us. Um, maybe it will help inform decisions on building heights, but I think at the end of the day, we're going to create some codes around that that will be more specific. So that's, and echoing on that, that's kind of my thoughts are that is, is a statement that yes, indeed, view sheds are important. We want that to be considered when new codes are updated. Um, there's nothing specific to that. Um, but other than, yes, we want to see the implementation and the codes respect these views um, that I don't think at this point we can really be more precise than that. But just that, yeah, that's an important consideration. It's not the only consideration, but it certainly is an important consideration. That's my thoughts. Okay, that's helpful. Um, Okay. One quick uh, other thing on that, just at the very the last 
Uh, the last statement there brings up the the notion of uh, night sky. Right. And um, I don't know how that is in current code or in future code, but also that, you know, the notion that we would like, I would like to see <laughs> uh, our street lighting, um, you know, the most modern kinds of street lighting that we have do very little to deter from that night sky but because they are very good at projecting down only. And that sort of thing to preserve night sky would also be something to consider as we look at new implementations. Right. And we do actually an implementation have review it because um, just reviewing our dark, dark sky regulations, making sure they are, you know, as current and up to date as possible. I believe one of them or part of it is um, they don't want LED. Well, LEDs are the most energy efficient. So if you want to conserve energy, you want LED. Um, but what color LED and all of that and working, it, it, it's, you know, when we go through site plan reviews, we always are looking at down, downlit, yeah. fully cut off light fixtures, but just going through and making sure our dark sky code um, is actually achieving what we wanted to achieve. And it, if it needs to be strengthened, then we need to address that. And coming from us, I mean, the, the we don't need to be precise. We just need to say that is an important consideration. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, there was a comment that there were no uh, goals related to water conservation. Um, this is in the public utilities facilities chapter goal two water resources, uh, water quality, environmental value of Lake Pendere, Sand Creek and Syringa Creek water resources are protected and enhanced. Uh, we talk about stormwater conserving riparian buffers, encouraging uh, reduction of herbicides and fertilizer. Uh, reducing sources of water pollution and supporting efforts to identify and restore native aquatic habitat. We do actually also have in the Appendix A um, as an action, uh, reduce water consumption community-wide through education and incentives. So we have it as an action, but we don't have it as a stated goal or objective. Um, is that something the commission feels should be added. Mr. Chair. Yes. Can you go back to the other slide? You, it, it looked like it referenced, um, so this this chapter 11, mm -hmm. is there a goals statement related to water conservation in chapter 11? Um, and let me double check, is water resources in, that might be in chapter 11. Let me just double check. That isn't actually in chapter 11, it's not in utilities. That is a, that is goal. Um, let me see here. Yeah, that water resources goal that I referenced actually is in the um, chapter 11, not in public utilities facilities. Uh, so, um, yeah, so there's goal two. Um, oops. So, So that's the goal for water resources, our natural resources. And then we have 
um, in the implementation for Chapter 11 Natural Resources, um, the action of reducing water consumption community-wide through education and and the comment was that there was not the adequate. Was, there's not a goal on water conservation, the importance of water conservation. Oh, okay, not water quality, but water conservation. Right. Oh, okay. We should have a goal of reducing water consumption. Correct. And it is in the implementation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and can we just add it to one of the existing goals and some wordsmithing? And we talk about reduction of herbicide and fertilizer. Well, and yeah, those are all related to water quality, but um, I mean, I think we'd be adding another, another F that just says encourage reduction of use of water resources through conservation. Yeah. And I don't know that that would ever become, I mean, when you look at implementation, does that mean at some point they would want a building code that says you have to have low flow shower heads and that sort of thing? I don't know, but we're not being specific. We're just saying it's well, reducing. But it's, it's interesting that in the implementation matrix, we have something that- It's addressed. Addressed. Yeah. It is addressed. But within- Here, it's not. The document, well, we don't. So. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I would be in favor of adding something that- that's, this is a, that reduction of water consumption is a goal. Yeah, water conservation yeah. should be considered. And I agree. Okay. Okay. And we don't need to be more specific because that could be household. It could be watering lawns, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't need to be specific at this point. Correct. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that, those were the broad areas that in particular Miriam going through was like, these, these are, the comments are big enough. Like we had a lot of them, um, 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 multimodal. So some of them, we can just add some additional language to existing goals and objectives. Um, but that was. Those were the three areas she felt we needed additional direction on. So um, to summarize, we will, um, on the first question, we will adjust the future land use map to shrink the medium density residential, taking out vineyard court. Um, we will keep the view shed map and analysis. Um, I may, Miriam and I may try to wordsmith what the actual text says just to be a little clearer. Um, and then we'll add a goal related to water conservation. So those were the three areas. Um, and then really just going through all the comments, uh, did the commission have other areas that they felt needed to be incorporated or um, amendments made to the document. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Grant. Um, I was in in a discussion, I think it was last Thursday, the, like the North Idaho economic discussion and uh, Mayor Shelby um, presented via video on um, things that are being done to address affordability of homes. And, and he mentioned the updated comp plan. And I, I just, are we, are we being specific enough or is there enough in this plan that really addresses affordability and how we're going to make homes more affordable in the Sandpoint area? And I know that that's like, we, there's mentions of it throughout the document Mm -hmm. And I know that in the implementation plan, there's talks about setting up a task force. But it, are there other things that we should be recommending um, that will help help uh, address the affordability issue? Because it seems like that's that's important to a lot of people, including the mayor and I'm sure the city council. 
Um, I think we have addressed as much as we can through planning. I mean, we, you know, um, reducing re reducing lot size, adding density, um, re you know, when we're doing the code updates, I think that's when we're really going to get into how would this affect, is, is this going to promote more housing or, but when it gets to affordability, that's really, if when you're getting into anything um, with that, it's either you're going to have to do a land trust that's going to write down the cost of the house, sort of what, what the Culver's Crossing model is, or it is, um, you know, really it's, it's going to be tax credits, it's going to be um, state and federal grants. Um, so I think from a comprehensive plan standpoint, I think we have as much in there as, as we can. Okay. I, I just think that when we have this workshop with the city council, I think that's probably going to be a topic of discussion. And so I think that those comments you made are, are great and should be some sort of, you know, in the presentation of, of how we have this workshop and I'm sure how it's going to be structured, but I think that those should be outlined. Okay. Um, I also think that uh, the city probably, and maybe this is part of the, the, you know, affordability workshop will come out of it, but, and, and I don't know if we may be proactively, but I think that the city does need to look at providing some sort of uh, reduction in impact fees or permitting fees for uh, affordable developments, you know, and, and I think that there needs to be some sort of assessment that the average median income is this, and that means an affordable home is priced at $300,000. And so if you are building a development and you're going to have prices that are at sub $300,000, you get no impact fees or you get right reduction in, in the soft costs that it takes to develop the land. Um, those are just kind of some of my, my thoughts and recommendations. And I, again, I don't know if we need to put that in an implementation plan or if it's just a part of that workshop that will develop those guidelines of how we create affordability. Right. And and there's it's we have these broad thing goals that we want to achieve it, and now how do we actually what's what are those implementation tools? Yeah. And um, any anything the city can do to assist if it's uh, you know faster approvals yeah. or it's um, a reduction of fees. As long as you know the whole city is on board with that, um, because obviously your a development does impact our utilities. Right. So if one person isn't paying, others are paying. So it's just mm -hmm. making sure that there is that broader understanding of reducing for one doesn't mean reducing for all. Hey, Mr. Chair. Yes. On that, I mean, the city government is very limited as far as, I mean, we can't enforce development developers to offer, you know, affordable housing. I mean, lawfully, it's right. that cannot be done. Um, so, you could incentivize them. Right. 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 I think Fonda wants to comment. chime in, maybe. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that I, that that I was going to add, I know we've had this conversation. I don't know if it has been implemented or put into this document. Um, and that was that. I mean, I think it has come up that the only true solution to affordable housing is public-private partnership. It's not going to come from market forces. They just don't accomplish it. Um, and so, is that is that sort of a statement of a public-private? partnership, whatever that might look like, whether that's a land trust or something else. Right. But is that in the document? Um, I think that is discussed in, let's see. I think that's mentioned in the Leland report, <laughs> which I don't know right. if that's uh, yep. connected to this document or referenced at all. Yeah, it, it, the Leland report, as mentioned, many, many places, and I think in the implementation, as well as um, in the housing chapter, we talk about, you know, government can't do it alone. Right. 
And I, I think that's right. Government can't do it alone and a private enterprise can't do it alone, but a partnership between the two might be the most successful way. And again, we can't, we can't, um, we can't demand that that happen, but again, it is the sort of thing that we can certainly encourage. Fonda, did you have something? No, I, I was just going to reinforce that um, our options are limited with regards to how much government can actually do with the affordability issue. And I think that you're all correct. That will be uh, discussed at length in the workshop. Um, but as but as has been said by by the Panhandle Area Housing Alliance, as well as um, the economic development section of every one of our governmental entities, um, you know, just government's not going to fix it, but the public private partnership is the avenue that seems to be the best avenue. I will say just briefly on the comment regarding impact fees, that would be a really um, dangerous road to go down right now. It would require uh, a complete overhaul of our impact fee uh, code section because Idaho code requires very specific details in your impact fee implementation code. And so that's an area where it's um, a little more difficult to deal with the credits. Uh, there, there are other areas, but they're pretty limited. And so the public-private partnership is really where the answer is. And second to that, um, this document, as you know, is a guiding document. And so as Amy was indicating, it's setting out your goals and then your code implements the action that you want to take to accomplish those goals. So, yeah, I mean, you all know that you've been working on this for a long time, but just to kind of reiterate that. Mm. Mr. Chair. Yes. And of course, we have the ADU aspect of, of our code. Correct. Right. Correct. Which helps with affordable living housing. Roll down on that image just a little um, bit. So more. Here are our goals. So housing affordability. Um, coordinate regionally on housing strategies for low and moderate income population through a housing authority or other mechanism. So that could that could the could the actual word be added right there or other public like private, private mechanism private just so we have yeah. that because that's kind of a pretty overarching concept mm -hmm. that would be nice to have in here um, or uh, i would say or other mechanism including but not limited to public private partnership sounds excellent mm -hmm. because yeah, d mentions or other mechanism Correct. Yeah, that's what we're talking about yeah. at the end of that adding yeah. that. Oh. To get that phrase in there. Gotcha. Do you have anything else for us, Ms. Tweeten? Uh, no. Any other additions, changes? This is this is the table of uh, all the comments, mm -hmm. commenters. There were there were numerous um, comments on ACI and, um, mm -hmm. but that. You know that'll be addressed when we are doing the uh, sub area plan and working with the county on because I think there were concerns that it's in the ACI. You know what are the codes that apply because if it's just the county codes and the ACI and then we annex it in we have, you know, substandard streets and we don't have sidewalks we don't have trails. Um, so that's that's a long discussion that we are yes. going to be having. <laughs> Mr. Chair, 
Yes, and, Mr. and that discussion doesn't have to be done prior to no. this. Okay. No, we just in the implementation table we have um, you know, reaching agreement on the revised boundary and working with the county on a sub area plan, which would also talk through what are what are the what are the codes that apply in the ACI. Uh, and a question for you concerning that, um, the implementation plan, again, Appendix A, is that continually updated much more so than the comprehensive plan itself? Um, it could be. I mean, I when you look at it, um, there's a whole lot there that's short term, which is like in the next <laughs> five right. years, that goes fast. So, um, but it could be if some one of these things gets completed, then that doesn't need to be in the table anymore. Right. But because we are going to be re, you know, at least doing some sort of an update on status of the comp plan every year, and then really looking at it within three to five years, um, but, that's likely when the major update to this appendix would happen. But new goals to, I mean, a new uh, specific implementation goals to address the broader goals of the comp plan could be added by this commission or the city council as needed. Is that accurate? Right. Yes. And that not so much goals, but what are the actions we're taking to implement Correct. the plan? To meet those comp plan goals. Yep. Mr. Chair? Yes. So I would add that I think that the, the comments are great from they can inform the implementation plan. I think that trying to go back and address each and every one of them within the comp plan would uh, not provide a, a ton of benefit. I think that they're, they're very specific um, comments that I think would be better uh, taken into account when the implementation plan is moving forward. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any further questions for staff at this time? I'm here. Okay. What, what, do, what do we think, how, how does this workshop with the city council, what does it kind of look like? Um, it, and we're gonna call it a work session. Yeah. Because we've <laughs> discovered that wording batters. Uh -huh. um, so both bodies will be here. We'll have kind of um, the room set up, tables, for council tables for the commission. Um, as Fonda said, I'll give the background of how we got the document to this point. Okay. Uh, what are the big discussion items? I think um, I, I appreciate your input on definitely talking about how the big hot ticket items are addressed in this plan. Yeah. Um, and then really it's, uh, you know, Council's first chance to look at it and ask the commission questions. So that's what I expect. So and obviously they've had access to the document, but right. you know I'm sure that maybe some of them have have dug into it and some of them maybe just slightly perused it. Right. Um, but the the goal will have been that they have been provided it prior to that meeting and that they will have an opportunity to establish questions. Mm -hmm. And there'll probably be a, a questioning part of that work session of, I see this, how'd you come to this conclusion, right? Yeah, I really see it as a pretty open forum, okay. not, I wouldn't say not structured, but just more questions and answers. Yeah. And does that meeting have a public comment period to it, or is this just a workshop between the two bodies? Um. Yeah, it, it's going to be a work session, but um, generally we always allow for public comment at the end. Okay. But it's not the public hearing, so gotcha. um, it is really just common at this point. Great. Thank I, you. Think, I think we've been methodical enough that, you know, people... Um, you do this chapter and we're reviewing it and it's on the website, um, but 
we do know also that people wait till the end and, and then <laughs> they get concerned, but there's nothing we can do to stop that. Yeah. So as long as the commission is comfortable, um, then I think we can clearly articulate to the council that we feel this, this plan is um, ready to go public hearing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these comments that came from the public will be addressed in that plan that the, uh, yes. yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So that should <clears throat> and hopefully solve some of their issues. That, and, and many of them are being addressed by the couple of little changes we've made here yeah. this evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So is it safe to say after this is all said and done, then we'll, the next step for us is code change, working on code? Yes. Okay. So we'll be busy. Yes. Yep. The next step gets hard. Yeah. <laughs> this was easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only took us four years. <laughs> well, so that's regulation, and that's yes. that's a pandemic to blame. You, know, you know, plan you don't have unintended consequences. When you're dealing with regulation, you might have unintended consequences. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, commissioners. Any other comments, questions for staff? Madam Clerk, do we have public wishing to participate in public comment this evening? We have no attendees other than staff and attorney. Thank you. So then we can forego that. Uh, and then we'd be entering the time of our commissioner roundtable if commissioners have any other items for broad discussion. So we should anticipate we'll, we'll be meeting that Tuesday before the meeting with the city council? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on you having another meeting before the thirty first. Got it. Okay. Okay. There isn't anything on the docket as far as uh, projects coming to us between. Uh, them. You will have a public hearing at your June sixth meeting um, on a, a seventy foot cellular tower on Baldy Mountain Road. That's right. You mentioned that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you will be having a few. Um, they're being processed as subdivisions, but they're actually short plants. But for various reasons, either they involve dedication of right of way or um, just they're a flagpole lot or something, they have to go through not the full subdivision, but they have to get a, reviewed and recommended by the Planning Commission and City Council. So you'll be having some of those as well. I anticipate it'll be a little while, but I anticipate a conditional use permit application for the development at the end of Samuelson. That's 156 um, residential units, uh, but that it's it's complicated because they also have to we have to get the right of way dedicated, and that road needs to be built. So, um, but I anticipate them coming within the next couple of months um, with the conditional use permit application because for the number of residential units is what requires this UP. So, you may, I don't know for sure, you may get an amended preliminary plat for phase two of Boyer Farms, um, but you may not. They're kind of looking at whether they want to increase some lot sizes, decrease other lot sizes um, to get in some duplexes. Um, but I don't know yet whether that will require a change or not. So can you re remind me on, we, we've approved some uh, apartment complexes north of uh, Super One and off of Boyer. The one off of Highway 2 is stopped. Is there anything from a time uh, of approval that those would lapse or expire? Um, there is. So on Milltown, there's a one year, um, if you don't have any activity, they've been doing different, like they did their traffic impact analysis. They, I think our last permit for them was maybe October. So they have been 
continuing to work. They're yeah. just not to the point of submitting building permit applications. Okay. Um, but. Um, but they are active. Sorry. But they are active. They are active. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other um, conditional use permit that went to appeal um, on Lincoln and Maine, that, that CUP um, would expire in February of 24. Um, so there hasn't been any activity on that, um, but there could be. Um, so. So what happens to this place that's, like Ben said, they've stopped building? Right. Um, we anticipate that they will start again, um, but they have, I'm going to get this wrong. If there is no activity, I think it's 180 days, um, then your building permit will expire. Um, so they just have to go through that process again if if they right. if it's lapsed. Right. But again, because all those foundations are in, mm -hmm. I anticipate mm -hmm. that will get started again. Yeah, I think that that reminded me of the question of affordability, and that there's this. Um, thought process, I think, from a lot of people that there's there's 1,300 units that are coming here in the near future. I'm like, well, how near is the future? <laughs> is that going to be in the next six months? Is it going to be the next year, next five years? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how those those projects play out, given the current uh, financial environment with interest rates and everything, and if those developers are actually moving forward with those projects or not. Right. Interesting times. Yeah. Are we ready to call it an evening? So. so. Okay. With no further business before the commission, this meeting is now adjourned at 6 28 p.m. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you.